So as it stands right now, according to Bob Arum of Top Rank Boxing, Terrence Crawford will be returning on March the 21st, 2015 in Madison Square Garden, New York. Now, he's been a big draw in Holman on Omaha, Nebraska, fighting his last two fights there, 25-0 with 16 KOs or 17. I think it's 17. But as it stands right now, it's time to start building him outside of his home. Now, what he's done there, putting 10,000 plus people in seats on two occasions against Yurkis Gamboa and, um, and uh, um, um, Ray Beltran and also high HBO ratings, now it's time to start making his name bigger and getting him ready for pay-per-view. Maybe Manny Pacquiao in the future, which has been talked about maybe a potential, a potential fight after Floyd Mayweather. So, as it stands right now, if you don't know, I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. I do all my videos uncut, uncensored, and we're going to talk about some boxing. Right now, we don't know who the former 140-pound champion WBO Chris Algieri 20 in one with um, eight KOs. We don't know necessarily who he is, but I can tell you this. People think that he's just a smaller fighter that moved up in weight to fight Pacquiao. He's actually had only if he fights Terrence Crawford, three fights at 140 pounds. So normally he's a small 147 pounder, meaning, you know, he should have had no problem with making the catch weight of 144 pounds, which is why, in my opinion, you know, I'm confused about him. Now, we know he can box. We know his punch output is low. We know he can move. So imagine him up against Terrence Crawford, who has fought above 135 pounds before. Remember, he's the former WBO 135-pound lightweight champion. He has vacated. He is fully 140 pounds now. He was having trouble making a weight. Even though he made weight professionally, it was killing him to do so. But he succeeded and looked good both of the times he did it as far as, um, as far as, um, um, 2014 is concerned. So, well, 2014, yeah, he fought three times. Ricky Burns, Yerkes Gamboa, and Ray Beltran, which is why he's the fighter of the year. But now, looking at the fight that, that's ahead of him or looking at the fights that are ahead of him, top rank, they like to match you tough. Um, Chris Algieri is a banner promotions guy, but also Chris Algieri should want to get his 140-pound belt back. But looking at the fact that he didn't make weight, I'm asking myself, okay, you're supposed to be a master nutritionist, but yet you can't get out the cage and yet you can't make 144 pounds. You know, now he did make the weight, but still it's like, okay, well, wait a minute. You're a 140 pound champion. So there's so many questions I have to ask myself and I ask myself also, well, where does he go from here to get bigger money? You know, so from what I'm getting from it is that um, he has some somewhat um, outlandish demands. That's the word that was used to me. As far as you know, okay, we know you fought Manny Pacquiao or coming off a of pay per view. I mean, we're, you're coming off of um, a pay per view, but still, you know, you lost your fight against Manny Pacquiao, being knocked down six times, and fans don't know, and I'm sure promoters don't know if you're out of the cage or not. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, can he make a million dollars fighting? Um, um, can he make a million dollars? fighting Terrence Crawford. And I think of in Madison Square Garden, you just fought Manny Pacquiao. Terrence Crawford is already a big name himself, you know, as his nickname is, he's a budding, you know, um, um, name. Put them in Madison Square Garden. Chris Algieri should be in the film Madison Square Garden just off of his own by fighting Manny Pacquiao because remember, he's from that area. So the fight can sell, but at this point in time, I'm thinking, okay, well, who will win? Obviously, Terrence Crawford would be the favorite because Terrence Crawford is multiversal. Um, Terrence Crawford, he could fight you right-handed, he could fight you left-handed, he could be the boxer, he could be the pressure fighter, and he could be the um, the guy that, that likes to get his chin tested. And Chris Algieri just doesn't have the punch output and the power to be able to stop, let alone hurt, Terrence, Terrence Crawford. But, you know, if he's a warrior, you know, if he wants to get in there, you know, and test it out, I'm just saying. I, I'm trying to look at a way that Chris Algieri can win. But um, realistically, you know, looking at the fact that, well, you know, if he threw more punches and kept moving, then maybe. But he just doesn't throw enough punches. He's a little too, like, he'll have a high punch, um, or he'll have a high percentage, um, but he'll get outthrown by 20, 30 punches in a round, some shit like that. You know, and it can happen because he's very conservative, especially after the fact that, you know, he went down six times again Pacquiao and he should have been stopped at one point in time. So I think to myself, well, um, how is he going to be mentally going into this next fight? Usually fighters fight Pacquiao, you know, lately they don't be mentally the same. 
you know, so just my own personal opinion. But I am T-Street Controversy with RealCombatMedia.com, March 21st, 2015. Hopefully, we will have Terrence Crawford versus Chris Algieri for the vacant WBO title. Oh, and the, um, talk about Matisse. Now, how the WBO works is, if you vacate a belt in a division, that automatically makes you the number one contender for a belt in the higher division that you're moving up to. So, for example, if Demetrius Andre was to vacate, if Demetrius Andre was to fight Matt Vay Corbal for the 160 pound title, he would have all right to, but he would have have had to have vacate his uh, 140, I mean 154 pound title. So if Pacquiao wants to go after the 154 pound title, I'm just throwing scenarios out there. I'm not saying it would happen um, against Demetrius Andre. He would be the number one contender for Andre's belt. But he would have to drop that 147 pound title. So basically, since Crawford was the 135 guy moving up, that makes him the number one contender. And since Chris Algieri went on to fight Manny Pacquiao, he had to drop his belt, won a loss. So now he, you know, so basically, that's how that fight is um, a WBO num um, uh, championship bout. And Lucas Matisse is a ranked guy in the WBO, but since this whole thing I just explained to you, that's why he was skipped over and most likely will be facing Ruslan Volkov. So I know I probably didn't confuse you, but think about it. It does make sense. And, and um, from what I see, the WBO is not showing favorites. It's actually, you know, a part of their rules, which is kind of weird. Once again, T Street Controversy on Twitter, T Street Controversy on Instagram, T Street Controversy on Facebook. I got a like page, all that. Your number one source on boxing news is where I'm trying to get. My bad. The on demand just froze. T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy live.